Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the DNS options available in Unify's gateways that are using version 9.4 or above of their controller software and show you how to put them to work in your setup. So let's get started. Now, the first and important thing I want to mention is the version I'm running, which is the Unify UDM Pro Max with version 4.36 and the Unify Network with 9.4.17. Now this is release candidate as of the recording of this here in August of 2025, but it will be in full release quite soon. I waited to do the video because there's a lot of changes in 9.4 compared to when 9 was initially released and some of the updates have had to DNS in version 9. 9.4 brings us a slightly different but much more enhanced interface for doing DNS and a lot of other things under their policy engine. Now to get to DNS, we're going to go over to policy table. Policy table is the new feature in version 9.4, and it allows you to see all of the policies and the policy specifically we're going to look at in this video is just DNS, but you can see the other options here. One thing I really like about this, and this change is very welcome, of course, is when you start having a lot of entries, you can filter for things like just the type of entry, or maybe only entries as they relate to a specific IP address, or in this case, a specific C name. Being able to filter this gives you a much easier way to manage this. Also, as I mentioned, this is why I waited until 9.4 to do the DNS video, because I think this is a much easier way to handle things. In terms of handling the records, we have the ability to click manage because there's no way to just click delete. Let me explain. We go here, we have this test.test2.lawrencesystems.com. And yes, you can do multiple entries like that. They work perfectly fine. But if you notice, there's not any way to delete this entry. The way you would delete this is we're going to go to manage and check the box and hit remove. We do have the option to pause a DNS entry. What that means is do not delete the entry, pause it, leave it there, but do not answer with that DNS if it's query. So we're going to go ahead and hit pause and it grays it out. We hit done. And so we can see that this is now a pause policy and we can go back over here to manage and we'll go ahead and remove it because I really don't need it. I just had it there as a test and for this demo. Now this does let you do these in group. Of course, you can select all of these ones here. You can also use these filters to change the selection type to be able to do things in group control, such as mass removing DNS entries. There is at this time, not any way I see to do this where you can import a mass of DNS entries. Maybe something they'll add later. To create a new DNS entry, we go over here to create policy and let's talk about the options are in here. We have host A records, host IPv6 records, alias C name, mail, text, SRV, and forwarding domain. I think it's interesting they offer MX records here, but Unify was not meant to be your external DNS, only your internal DNS. So if you wanted to use this, this is not meant to publicly expose your DNS and use this as a server as public DNS. But if you wanted to build a mail server internally and have your own setup, this is something you could use to get that to work. Tax records are neat. They have some special use cases. Uh, once again, this is internal. Maybe you have some specialization for internal setup that requires these or an SRV. The forwarding domain is something you may use and we'll touch on quickly here is the ability to, and if you're running some split horizon DNS and you say, hey, I need these particular DNS lookups for this domain to go to this server, maybe another server that you have internally, this is where you would use that. It's not something everyone uses, but maybe if you had a need to use the unified DNS, but also use Active Directory DNS for certain things, this is a way you could split that up and have some domain.com use a specific internal or external DNS server for those particular lookups. Now let's take a look at an existing record and walk through a scenario that is really common. People who want to set up internal reverse proxies. I've done videos on Nginx Proxy Manager. This is the DNS entry for it, npm.lawrencesystem.com. And I give it a host entry of 172.16.16.31. So this is my Nginx Proxy Manager and it points to this domain. From there, this is where C names come in. Now I can take these other services that I'm hosting, such as Fresh RSS, and I could point them as a host record at that same IP address because Nginx Proxy Manager answers at that IP address based on the DNS entry and SNI record that comes at it. But the reason we use an alias C name is so that freshrss.lawrencesystems.com is pointing at npm.lawrencesystems.com, as is, and we'll filter for this really quickly, all 13 of these domains. What this allows me to do is if I decide to move my Nginx proxy manager to another location, as in another IP address, all I would have to do is update my Nginx proxy manager host record 
to the new IP address, and I don't have to update the 13 other services that point at this particular domain name. Now, there is a one more way you can create DNS entries for devices. We go over to Client Devices. We've got it filtered to My Desktop. We're going to go here to Settings. I've already given it a fixed IP address, and as long as this fixed IP address is there, the local DNS will be another option we can check, and we can set it to tomsdesktop.lawrencesystem.com. We're going to hit Apply. Now, let's go back over to our policy engine. And there's a DNS entry for my system. But if you go to manage, you'll notice you're not able to manage it. This way, we have to go here and click on it. And it just brings up this again, where we can uncheck this box if I didn't want it to have an entry. And once we do that, it will disappear out of the DNS entries here. A couple quick things I want to point out. Yes, you can do DNS redirection very easily with Unify by simply turning on the content filtering per the instructions here by navigating to settings, cybersecure content filter, create a filtering policy. You know, this does not require a subscription if you want to use the basic filtering. So I've gone to that spot here in cybersecure. We can just create test. We can select a device or network. We have like one computer on here if I want to select this one or any one or multiple of these networks. And that will automatically create a redirect policy for that. The bigger challenge that most people run into is actually with the browsers themselves. Depending on when you installed your browser or which browser you're using, I'm pointing this out in Chrome, but this exists for other browsers such as Firefox as well. There is a secure DNS option with a few pull downs in here. Those are not standard port 53 redirects. The DNS over HTTPS, well, it's an HTTPS connection. Therefore, it's not as easy or quite as simple to block. Also, if you prefer OS default or want to use local DNS, do check these settings. Frequently, when people are troubleshooting reverse proxies, this hangs them up. They'll get good DNS resolution from a command line query to do an NS lookup or a dig on the IP addresses that are being answered by the DNS server, but they'll find their browser does not do that properly. Also, try restarting the browser even after you set these in case it happens to be caching any of those DNS. Those are frequent troubleshooting things that people run into on the regular when setting up DNS and adding entries into their server and trying to get their reverse proxies up and running, which is a pretty common use case for DNS and a very important component of reverse proxies and get them to work properly. Hopefully that helps. If you got thoughts, questions, or a different take on today's topic, drop them in the comments down below. Want to support the channel in other ways? You can do that through Patreon or by grabbing items from our swag store. We've got some fun tech-themed shirts, stickers, and other nerdy gear that won't boost your bandwidth, but will definitely boost your style. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. If you're looking to connect with me or learn more about the services we offer, just head over to lawrencesystems.com. You'll find all my links to the socials and the best ways to get in touch. If you found this video helpful, chances are you'll find the next one helpful too. So keep learning and keep clicking wherever those videos are showing up around me. Thanks.